Hey guys, I'm Jessica and I am here today to talk to you about five ways to start your novel. Before we talk about how to start your novel, let's talk about the purpose of the beginning of a book. The first purpose of the beginning of a book is to introduce your characters. You need to figure out what your audience needs to know about your main character or your main characters before they start the rest of the book. So this is a great time for character development because this is the first impression that your readers get of your character. The second thing you want to think about is introducing your setting. So that's the time your novel takes place and where it takes place. Introducing the setting also helps you develop the mood of your novel. The third thing you want to do in the beginning of a book is introduce your conflict. So you're going to have an internal and external conflict. The internal conflict is what your main character struggles with inside his or her mind. And then the external is what he or she struggles with outside of himself. In the beginning of a book, you want to introduce your conflicts so that your readers know where your book is going. Number four, this is the most important part of the beginning of a book. You want to hook your audience. I feel like the beginning of a book is the most important because this is the point where your reader is deciding, am I going to invest in this book and keep reading it or am I going to put it down? And there have been books that I've put down. Like that fourth Harry Potter book. If she would have talked about Quidditch a little bit longer, I might have put the book down. So the five ways to start your novel, these are based on my own experience writing, my experience reading, and then my experience teaching writing. So the first way to start your novel is through a flashback. Flashbacks are great for character development because you can go back and choose a moment that shows the audience something that they need to know about the character. For example, in my first novel, I started with a flashback. The flashback included my main character, Emerson, and her best friend, Bree, walking through the woods to this barn party, as teenagers do. What was great about this flashback is it showed the audience what I needed them to know about both characters. It was also helpful in kind of shocking the audience when they learn that Brie is dead for the whole novel. If you want to read that introduction, I just posted it on my NaNoWriMo page, and if you want that link, it's in the description below. So be sure to go read that if you want to. Also when you're there, make sure that you add me as a writing buddy. The second way you can start your novel is by starting in their childhood. If you're writing a coming of age story, this is a great way to start. An example of this that I always think of is Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre grows up to be this very reserved, practical woman. To explain it, Charlotte Bronte starts in her childhood. She had some tragic things happen to her. Um, she was sent to live with her evil aunt and her evil cousins. She had kind of a supernatural experience when she was younger and then she was also sent to an orphanage where the conditions were not great. Her best friend died. So starting at her childhood and working through her, you know, young adult years until the present time in the story was helpful in setting up why Jane is the way she is. Another example is the newer live-action Cinderella. I felt like that movie did a really good job of setting up Cinderella's personality. You got to see her when she was younger with her mother and father. She was very happy and then you got to see her mom die and her dad die and her stepmother take over and there was a lot more character development than that original Cinderella movie where you just kind of know they died but didn't see the whole process. The third way you can start your novel is in the middle of the action right before the climax. This is called In Media Res. You're starting in the middle of things. This is great for mystery stories and you see this a lot with TV shows. They'll start in the middle of the action when like the detective is locked up by the serial killer who knows what's going to happen and then they go back and start from the beginning and work their way up to the climax and then free the detective always and then finish out the story. The second novel I wrote actually started like this. So the point right before the climax my character is in a mental hospital trying to figure out what happened one particular night. So she kind of introduces the story from the mental hospital and then goes back and starts telling the story from the beginning. So the rest of the book follows her up until that night and then follows her journey. Dang it, I said journey again. 
And then follows her experience trying to remember that night and finally remembering it and the consequences of that. If you want to read that introduction, I also posted that on my NaNoWriMo page. It is under the novel called Dot 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 because obviously I am really good at making up novel titles. <laughs> The fourth way you can start your novel is having your main character reflect on the events of the novel at the very end. One example of this is The Great Gatsby where the narrator Nick is reflecting on his experience as an older man. He's actually writing the book and writes about writing the book. He sets up the mystery with Gatsby. He also gives us some false information about Gatsby. He says that he's going to be okay in the end, and obviously he's not. But that introduction prepares us to view Gatsby in this kind of mysterious way. So before we even hear about him, we know that there's this mystery surrounding him. It also sets Nick up as a very observational person, and it lets us know that everything we're reading is his observation. So we have to think about, is he a reliable narrator, or is his narration skewed by different things like his friendship with Gatsby? Another introduction that starts like this is the Poisonwood Bible. It starts with Orleana, the mom, reflecting on her time in Africa, and we get to find out that one of her daughters dies. Which makes reading the rest of the book that much more dramatic. Like with Romeo and Juliet, you know immediately from reading the prologue that they're gonna die. So it's already a tragedy. Had Shakespeare not started Romeo and Juliet like that, we might have had hope for them. But we go into reading the play with absolutely no hope for them. The fifth way to start your novel is with a happier time. A lot of war novels or Holocaust novels start like this, um, like Elie Wiesel's Night, The Diary of Anne Frank, and then books like All Quiet on the Western Front, which is about World War I. It starts with the happier times to contrast the terrible times. It shows us the change in characters, it shows us the change in their outlooks on life. In Night, Ellie starts the novel as a very devout Jew, very interested in his religion, and we see his loss of faith throughout the Holocaust. If we hadn't have seen Ellie in his happier times when he has faith and a family, then we wouldn't realize how much he's changed by the end of the novel. So this is a great way to start a book if you are trying to show how much someone has changed or how an event has changed a person. Obviously you can mix a couple of these techniques, but all five of these are great ways to start your novel and they will ensure that your reader wants to keep reading your book, which is the ultimate goal. Thank you guys for watching this video. It has been surprisingly difficult to do this. You wouldn't think that sitting in your own house talking into a camera would be that intimidating, but it really is. I have so much more appreciation for people who do this now. It's kind of hard to open yourself up and put yourself out there not knowing who's watching or what they're thinking about you. But I really enjoyed this experience so far and I really appreciate you watching and following along with me. So remember to go to my NaNoWriMo page and read those introductions if you want to read them and add me as a writing buddy. I really need more writing buddies as you will see when you get there. I'm getting more and more excited for NaNoWriMo by the day. I've been thinking more about what I want to write. I'm really leaning towards a mystery. So more on that coming soon. I hope that everyone's NaNoWriMo planning is going well. Hopefully everyone is getting their story together and getting excited for November. I will insert a clip of my little baby here. He just woke up. Just in time. Can you look at the camera? Can you look at the camera? <laughs>